Most people think that their health or their level of disease is written inside the DNA. The truth is your genes set the stage, but it's your environment and our choices that we make that really decide how the story of our health plays out. That's where epigenetics comes in, and that's where hyperbaric oxygen may play a really big role in this conversation around chronic illness. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders. I've been practicing hyperbaric medicine and functional medicine for the last 20 years. I've recently completed my PhD at the University of Miami in molecular biology, and the research that I did was on hyperbaric's impact on our epigenetics. So in a very simple summary, your genetics or your DNA code that's what you inherited from your parents. It's your fixed sequence of genes. Epigenetics, epi meaning over or around your genetics, refer to a series of signals that basically can turn on and off based on stimuli from your environment, from your lifestyle, from your experiences here on planet Earth. Your genes are providing the blueprint for how cells need to respond, but your epigenetics act like a contractor deciding which parts of that blueprint ought to be expressed or suppressed based on the stimuli that your body's receiving. Many epigenetic changes are actually reversible. These are switches that turn on and off throughout our life, meaning certain behaviors or certain stimuli from your environment could switch something on that was undesirable, but switching that behavior, switching that choice, changing the environment can turn that switch back off or vice versa. Understanding that about 75% or more of your total picture of health is being influenced by your epigenome, which also means that we have control over how our epigenome is helping our bodies express our health or our disease. So how can I help make all of this information useful to you? Here's what I would say. I would say that your current level of health is really based on an accumulation of all of the experiences, the stimuli, the toxicities, the deficiencies, all the choices we've made or all the exposures that we've had really throughout our whole lifetime. But in particular, I would say that your current level of health could really be looked at as the last five to 10 plus years of lifestyle and environmental signaling. In other words, if you evaluated your life and your health today and you were pretty happy with where you were, it's likely that whatever you've been doing for those last five or 10 years, you ought to keep doing. You're in a good place. If you evaluate your life and your health today and you wish it was different or thought it would be different in the moment where you are versus what you thought it would be when you got there, then it's very likely that a series of environmental exposures or a series of lifestyle decisions or choices that have been made would be contradictory to long-term health. While that might be what led you to this moment, it's also important information to understand that if you want your future to be different than your current situation, well, then we need new and different environmental signals. We need new and different lifestyle choices. Today, if we wanna see a different version of ourselves five, 10, or 20 years into the future. Let's use one example to try to really drive this home. We could have two people. One is genetically predisposed to diabetes, while the other one is not genetically predisposed to diabetes. Traditional medicine might say the person who's genetically predisposed to diabetes, they're gonna get diabetes, it's only a matter of time. And I might say either one of these people could get diabetes or may not get diabetes depending on all of their environmental and lifestyle choices. In other words, let's say both of these people ate donuts for breakfast, cake for lunch, and pizza and ice cream for dinner. Super high sugar, super high carbohydrate lifestyles for their entire life. The person predisposed to diabetes will likely get diabetes faster than the person who wasn't predisposed, but it's very likely that both of them may end up in that category at some point into their future lives. So even the person that wasn't predisposed had epigenetic signaling pushing them to deal with this high carbohydrate, high sugar diet for decades and decades on end, where eventually the body will transition into that same diabetic disease pathway. On the flip side, if both of those people had very well controlled glucose levels and watched their diet and maintained a healthy lifestyle throughout their entire life, the person who wasn't predisposed to diabetes certainly shouldn't. And just because there was a person who was genetically predisposed, their epigenetic signaling would not have facilitated that same path to diabetes that they would have had they had that high carbohydrate, high sugar lifestyle. So the genetic factor may be a predisposition or a resistance to a certain disease, but it's really the lifestyle and environmental signaling that drives those people to that disease process or 
helps push them away from that disease process. So where does hyperbaric fit into all of this? When I launched my hyperbaric clinic in 2005, there was no roadmap. I had to learn the hard way, how to run chambers safely, how to keep patients comfortable, and how to stay compliant. That's why I created the basic hyperbaric technician certification program. I wish that I had access to this course when I first opened my clinic. In just 12 hours of training, you'll understand the science, the safety, the protocols that every operator needs to know. If you're serious about getting into hyperbaric oxygen therapy, start here and enroll today. Well, there was research that was done back in 2019 on biological aging and seeing hyperbaric's impact on actually reversing biological age versus chronological age. I wanted to take that same information and go one step deeper and actually look at the epigenetic impact of hyperbarics. Now, I've done a series of videos on the research that I did, which you can certainly take a look at after this video, where I'll go into much more detail of the different factors that we were measuring throughout the series of hyperbaric sessions. But in this video, I'll just summarize some of the detail. We saw a reduction in inflammation. We saw an upregulation of cognition and memory. And we saw reversal of biological age in a variety of different ways. But in the epigenetic testing, what we saw were the epigenetic changes that were actually responsible for all those other factors that we were witnessing. In other words, we saw epigenetic changes that would downregulate inflammatory pathways. We saw epigenetic changes that showed improved neuroplasticity and brain repair and brain development. We saw a reversal of biological age, but we found epigenetic factors that were responsible for cell cycle, for cell repair, for DNA repair, and for reducing cellular senescence, which is associated with aging. And so inside this research, we witnessed epigenetic changes that we now understand are responsible for the other changes that we've witnessed, not just in my study, but in studies that have been done for decades now, understanding the underlying mechanism for why we see the benefits and the changes associated with hyperbarics. It's been said before that oxygen as a molecule is associated with over 8,000 different gene pathways. And so using oxygen and hyperbaric as a mechanism to repair our epigenome so that we have improved cell signaling is absolutely an appropriate tool for long-term health and should be considered for helping patients who are suffering with chronic illness. And I've said this a number of times throughout all of the videos that we record. It's not only hyperbaric. In other words, you can't throw hyperbaric into your program and hope that that's going to fix or undo a sedentary lifestyle or a poor diet or other unhealthy lifestyle choices that you may be making. It's not going to be a magic bullet to fix all of the other environmental and lifestyle choices that we're making. We still need to be working in a multidimensional way to improve our health. We need proper nourishment. We need to remove toxicity. We need movement in our body. We need stress management. We need all of these different areas to be well-rounded as a big picture of health. And we could add hyperbaric to be one more piece of that puzzle that will certainly help to repair and shift some of our epigenetic signaling. I hope this video helps you understand that we have a lot more control over our overall health than we've been previously told. Now, if you wanna check out that video I did from my research on epigenetics, go ahead and you can click that video right here. Thanks always for your time and attention, and I'll see you on the next video.